Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. Hey, I can look at myself naked. Are you stoned or something? They tried stoning me, my dear. It did not work. He likes to create his own sauce. Well, did you sleep with a man who also slept with mom and grandma Catherine? What? You slept with dad? All right. Which one of you sardines called this meat? Whatever, major loser. Let the party begin! Hello, and welcome to Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. The optimistic little karate master who really is fighting with joy and not fists. That's Chad Akowitz. <laughs> and that's the joyous fists of Simone LaRue. <laughs> joyous fists are my band name. Ah, oh, what a great band name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, especially because like usually we have tiny angry fists. But yeah. today, today of all we days, it's joyous, joyous fists. fists. Look at your thumbs. You're a Krav Maga expert and your thumbs are out like a monster. What are you I know doing? These... <laughs> oh, well, in Krav, also, you don't do like straight um, punches mm. because um, if you're like having to defend yourself in the middle of the night, it's very unlikely that your wrists will be wrapped all nicely to make punching that soul. Yeah. Um, so you actually punch like with this part of your hand or strike, I guess it's not a punch. Right. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but, so that's why my thumb's out the way. Right. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, first of all, I do have a question in terms of like, why aren't your hands always professionally wrapped? <laughs> my wrists actually need the support all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there not a situation where you're like, just immediately need to do handstands and need that support on your on your wrists. <laughs> Carrying many heavy jugs of ale, and I need my <laughs> wrists just. <laughs> I mean, what kind I had of a life friend are you who living? worked at um at an Oktoberfest, uh, well, the one that they have down here in mm. uh, Cape Town, and she said like all of the barmaids have their wrists like they have wrist supports on um, wow. because they're carrying like all these really heavy beers back and forth. That's crazy. I mean, it's it's so necessary. Obviously, that's that's bonkers. Yeah. But like, you don't think about little things like that. Mm-mm. No, amazing. But hey, good on them for workplace safety. Exactly, exactly. You you need it, especially especially when you're bringing people the joy of ale. Um, mm. Workplace safety is more important than anything else. Anything else. And I mean, God, you. I miss beer tents. I, I was about beer to... garden. Yeah. I miss being in public and drinking. It's, it's, it must be so difficult. It's more, I can imagine it's more difficult in South Africa now that they've reestablished the ban. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I was obviously initially <laughs> furious. <quite irritated. laughs> um, but I'm feeling like, like, I feel a lot of peace about it, I guess. Like, you know, we got through the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing we can do. Raging against the machine isn't gonna help anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm okay. Okay. Uh, we a dear friend of ours, who I will not name because it's technically illegal, had a bunch of <laughs> spare wine uh, that he do- he doesn't like red wine, and he had all right. this red wine. So he gave us about six. Bottles, wow, that's and we're amazing. We're just gonna um, ration those for special occasions and stuff. Yeah, which is very lucky. But like, you know, (laughs) it's fine. Like we can live our (laughs) lives. (laughs) I mean, I was thinking about this the other day because of of everything that's been happening and and the Mm -hmm. fact that the alcohol ban's been reinstated in South Africa for those of our listeners who don't know. You are living the 1920s. Like the 2020s have come around again for you. This is prohibition era. Like, and I did not want them. <laughs> no, no one wanted this. But it gives you the opportunity to do bootleg alcohol and become Great Gatsby just without the death and murder. Um, I mean, I guess. <laughs> do it, you know. I, Chad, we've talked about this many times. Like I just have the worst luck in the world. And if I break <laughs> rules... I get caught like the whole way home after we got wine from um, the friend who like mm-hmm. gave us a bunch of his extra wine. I was shitting myself that th- we were going to get pulled over for like a stop and search because you're not oh, allowed man. to transport alcohol either. Like all distribution wow. is down unless you've got like a permit. Um, so yeah, I just, it's not for me, Chad. I can't do illegal things. The anxiety as well would kill you, I think, of like. Yeah, yeah, you oh you would God. be terrible at that. I'd be a mess. But, 
Also, fun fact, that is actually how uh, NASCAR started. It's by bootleggers who carried um, oh. uh, who, who carried illegal illegal alcohol and had to create cars that were faster than uh, police cars. And then it kind of just developed into the sport. So, you know, I'm giving you options here. NASCAR. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to help your your situation and just giving you all these really okay. useful, like, helpful suggestions. Like I said, I've made peace with it. I haven't even started like making ginger beer or anything yet. Like it was right. just like I'm really exhausted by all of this. <laughs> I'll just hydrate really well. It's fine. Yeah. So on to what are you drinking? Uh, my answer is water. Yes, as as it should be uh, mm. in in these difficult times. That's fair enough. Um, uh, what are you drinking? I am drinking. Uh, it's called Alska. Uh, and it's a oh. Italian um, cider. It's oh. vegan friendly, which is delightful. Ooh. And it's got sort of like, well, it's it's mango and yellow mandarin flavored, which is, it's very refreshing. That does sound very refreshing. It does not sound like a cider so much as like, what, a, a s- spritzer? Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of, it, it does taste like, it's almost like a Bacardi Alcopop okay. kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, and it's just so, so tasty and it comes in at 4% and it's just, yeah, so delicious. Like, it's dangerous because you could just chug these things yeah. back like, without yeah, fail. Yeah, that is, that's why those drinks are generally marketed to like 16 year olds because <laughs> it tastes like juice. I mean, we both know that inside of a 16 year old girl, I never got past my skater boy phase. Oh my gosh. I, um, I could still like, I still wouldn't say no to like a Smirnoff storm, you know? Right. Like the only reason you say no to a Smirnoff storm is because other people will judge you. Yeah, exactly. But like, if I'm in the comfort of my own home or if like, that's what's on offer, like, I'm not going to be a snob about it. No, no, it's still good. And it's delicious. Why not? So delicious. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of delicious, should we, before we tell, before I go into my film, what are we doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> we are doing one of the funnest and easiest weeks to be optimistic about, Jackie Chan week. Oh, uh, the, the, the Jackie Chan. How could you not love <sighs> this man? What <sighs> a darling. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. And I'm so excited to talk about these movies. Uh, so I am doing uh, Around the World in 80 Days and you are doing The Spy Next Door. Um, yeah, so, so let's just go straight into it because I'm, I'm yeah. starting. Yeah. Now, yeah. I do warn you, I haven't written a synopsis for this one. Me neither. But you're good at doing sort of improvised synopses. I am terrible at this. Like That's what the editing process is for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Okay, so here we'll we go. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Okay. <laughs> so... 18th century London. That's where we're at. Phileas Fogg, played by Steve Coogan, is a sort of wacky scientist. He's sort of frowned upon by the um, Scientific Academic uh, Institute of the United Kingdom, uh, who, which is run by Lord Kelvin, played by Jim Broadbent, who's this kind of maniacal despot who believes that he has got so much power because he's the head of the Scientific Academy that he can do whatever he wants. And what he's done is he has gone into business with General Fang, played by Karen Mock, who is a Chinese warlord. Uh, Together, they were able to procure the Jade Buddha, which is a tiny little jade statue from a Chinese village. And uh, they've kept it at the Royal Bank of England. Uh, That's where our story kind of starts. Then we find out that Paspatu, or Lao Xing, played by Jackie Chan, has stolen the Jade Buddha from uh, the Royal uh, Royal Bank of England. He's running away when he finds uh, Phileas Fogg's house. He then sees that Phileas Fogg has uh, fired his valet and he pretends to be a valet. So he joins forces with Phileas Fogg under the pseudonym Passport 2, which he saw from, he pretended to be French and he saw a passport and that's how he got his name. Uh, so Steve, uh, so Phileas Fogg goes to the academy to have a chat with Lord Calvin about sort of his inventions or whatever, and they have a big old fight because Lord Calvin doesn't really like Phileas Fogg and all of his sort of trying to advance science and bring us into a new age of English ingenuity where Lord Calvin's like, oh no, everything that's been discovered has already been discovered. There's no point of doing any new innovations or whatever. So the two are at odds. 
Um, science is done now. <laughs> yeah, science is done. So we don't need to do anything else. Uh, Everyone can go home. <laughs> <laughs> how great would that be just like this bell and it just rings in it's like science is done guys go everyone home. we've done it <laughs> so uh they're all in uh, like aggro at each other where then um basically lord calvin's like oh you know the the bank robber has stolen the jade footer and i'm sure he's like halfway across uh, the world to uh, he, he's probably just left england and phileas fogg is just like no that's insane by my calculations he's probably already in china uh and and lord calvin's like oh whatever you don't know shit um it wouldn't take how it, it would take so far longer to, tra to, to to travel to china and phileas fogg is like no it can be done in 80 days i can circumnavigate the world in 80 days so they then have a bet with each other. Lord Calvin says that if he gets round the world in 80 days, uh, Phileas Fogg can then have his seat as the head of the uh, Academic Science Institute. And, but if he loses, Phileas Fogg is no longer allowed to bet, invent things. He gives up any rights to be a scientist and his name will be publicly disgraced. So for some reason, Phileas Fogg says, yep, let's do this. And they engage in the bet start traveling the world they end up in france where they meet monique la roche uh, played by cecile de france uh, who is a painter a very underutilized painter who's sort of trying to establish herself she decides to go on the trip with them because she needs that inspiration as you can probably guess they fall in love phileas fogg and <laughs> monique fall in love because you know it's a woman and a man and this is sort of the early 2000s so why not My they God. Then continue to travel, meet wonderful and interesting people. They meet Arnold Schwarzenegger, who plays a Turkish man, which is insane. Um, they go to America, and it's all crazy. They meet the Wright brothers, who are played by uh, the Owen brothers, which is super fun. They end up in China, and Laoxing goes to return the Jade Buddha to his family. Uh, this is when all things kind of fall apart because now Phileas Fogg realizes that Laoxing is not past Batu and he's been lying to him and Monique knew the whole time. So uh, Phileas feels really, really betrayed, but, you know, eventually they make up and everything's fine and blah. Um, long story short, they then are able to get back to the, back to the, to, to the UK, but it looks like they've run out of time and they've lost the bet. But what's actually happened is that uh, Laoxing has reset the times wrong and they have a whole extra day, which meant they circumnavigated the globe in 79 days. St uh, Phileas Fogg wins the bet. Lord Calvin is arrested for, I guess, treason. And uh, the end. The end. What's your cliffhanger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it has to be this one. And it is that scene where Jackie Chan sings Farrah Jaka. Oh, it's so cute. I am so happy that we're doing a Jackie Chan week because it's moments like these where Jackie Chan is singing Farajaka that make life worth living. It's like, is this movie amazing? No. Does it have <laughs> just absolute gems of moments? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's got Jackie Chan singing for a jacket. It's got Kathy Bates playing the Queen of England. Right. Saying, you've been a very naughty boy, which <laughs> is incredible. Iconic. <laughs> I cannot believe that it's not like a gif that I could use every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the main character, white guy, is like just kind of a wet blanket dude who's like, oh, I must do science. Um, yeah. And the love interest is like a manic pixie dream girl and like, mm -hmm. whatever. But Jackie Chan's amazing. But Jackie Chan is amazing. I mean, that's re it's really funny that he's got such a bit part in this movie. Like he's, he's, he's a secondary character, he's a supporting actor, but he just steals the show completely. Yeah. He's so good at like everything he does. And, you know, like, I guess, you know, when you're in a Jackie, w w when it's a Jackie Chan movie, there's gonna be fighting and mysticism and stuff. Which, I mean, it's a given. It's sort of like, if Jack Black is in your movie, he's going to be singing. Yeah. It's just kind of part of the contract. And even with knowing that, it doesn't make it any less wonderful. He, you know, I just, he, yeah. you got to love him. you got to love him. And he, I think his fight scenes are really unique in the fact that he just uses whatever equipment's around him. Yeah. Uh, so he's just like, oh, cool, a ladder. Oh, cool, a chair. Oh, a 
bag of hats. Like he just does yeah. whatever he wants with with things. And I think that's really cool as an actor and as a kung fu yeah. expert to be so versatile. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think it's also cool, like how he doesn't. I don't know, because I mean, he's got so much star power. The fact that he doesn't really necessarily feel like he needs to be the star of the movie. He's mm. like, I just want to show up and do stunts and like tell a good story. I don't really care if I'm not like the main character, you mm -hmm. guys. No, absolutely. Even absolutely. though he should have been. <laughs> Although he should have been. Um, I mean, it is great. I don't know. I've never read Around the World in 80 Days, but I'm 100% sure that uh, Phileas Fogg did not have a Asian um, valet that was like a Kung Fu expert, but it always, it does make the story so much better. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a Turkish man. <laughs> I... Yeah, they arrived and I was like, oh, yay, Istanbul. Like, it's so beautiful. What are they going to show? And then it's the <laughs> shot of Arnold. And I, like, out loud to no one was like, oh, no. You <laughs> At can... least he didn't try to do an accent. Yes, yes. Like, they Thank just goodness. slapped a tan on him. Yeah. So Which, it was, To be it was fair, he offensive. had darker tans for every Mr. Olympia competition he's ever been in. True, true. Um, I mean, you can really t tell the age of a film by how white the non-white characters are yeah. uh, it, it, you know at least he was foreign at least he wasn't like american american i know it's he's not better german german <laughs> he's, he's austrian is he he's, austrian he's austrian he's austrian okay so it's but... better it's better look i'm not saying it's perfect i'm not defending whitewashing please understand i'm not defending <laughs> whitewashing i'm just trying to pull yeah. something out of early 2000s movies you know yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I mean, was the role really like I found the role really funny just because of how utterly ridiculous it was mm -hmm. to have him play this Turkish prince. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it also didn't really add anything to the role to have him be the one playing it specifically. No. No, absolutely. I completely agree. Like, it was really, it was amusing and, like, great um, casting for, like, Owen Wilson and, is it yeah. Luke Wilson? Because, yeah, Owen and Luke Wilson. Yeah, you could imagine them as the Wright brothers. But having, like, so funny. Prince Happy be this, you know, gigantic Austrian man makes so little sense. Like, wouldn't you want to get, like, you know, not try to, to like racially stereotype, but like someone a little shorter, someone a little hairier, like not saying, you know. Someone yeah. Turkish. <laughs> I mean, without saying anything else, yes, someone Turkish. Ooh, I'm sure you, there yeah. are muscular, terrifying Turkish men that they could have cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yet they went for Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I guess it's the, the whole star power thing, you know, Steve Coogan, Kathy Bates, um, Jackie Chan, you know, you've got all these, like, fantastic actors in this, which just really yeah. kind of draw people in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although, like, talking about whitewashing, I don't know if you saw in the news recently, uh, this is old news by the time this comes out, but um, yeah. a lot of shows like 30 Rock and Scrubs are, mm. and Golden Girls are cutting their episodes that have any sort of blackface or, or anything like that, which is, like, super yeah. cool. It's yeah. really, really no, nice. You know, and people are like, oh, you know, at the time they didn't realize. And it's like, well, blackface has never been acceptable, to be honest. Yeah. Um, they knew that on some level. They just also knew that they'd get away with it. Exactly. Exactly. And and it's I think it's it's very sort of telling of being al allowed to get away with things. And yeah, I think, exactly. You know, we've become a hell of a lot more accountable in saying, no, you can't yeah. get away with these things anymore. Um, yeah, which is yeah. great which is excellent excellent um so yeah i mean is there anything that you didn't like about it or you know is i think the movie's really long like okay. it's so so long and i'm not 100 percent sure that like whole tension point of uh what is his name fin phineas fogg mm, phileas phileas fogg. phileas, phileas fogg like the whole tension point of him not knowing about Jackie Chan wanting to return the Jade Buddha. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not sure that was strictly necessary, except I guess to have that turning point where the gang yeah. splits up later. Um, eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah. 
it's just such a long movie and i understand they are trying to go around like the whole world in 80 days but i feel like it would have been nice to dedicate a couple more frames to like the beautiful scenery and mm-hmm. like you know there it's a traveling movie like show like mm. how insanely beautiful istanbul is like what it's like on the streets there show how show what it's like in paris not just fucking eiffel tower um <laughs> when they get to america he's like in some shitty street and then he's in the desert and then like he's in new york inside a warehouse doing the final fight so there's no like there's there's not that those amazing like scenic views Mm -hmm. that you'd probably want to see from a movie called around the world in 80 days Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it it was like my scene that could have saved it but it's like this film is like a a college uh final project where they just do not have the budget. So they were like, don't. right, everything will be done like crappy side streets and things that we don't yeah. have to pay a lot of money for. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think if they remade this movie today, it would be really cool to see like what you're saying, like keep everything the same, barring like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, yeah, and, and you know, it would be a great film. It would be I- a really fantastic film. Also wish that they'd gotten a slightly better comedic actor to play Phileas Fogg. Like, I understand okay. he's supposed to be, like, this kind of wet blanket dude, but, like, Jackie Chan is really funny, and I think the woman in this was also mm. really funny. And then this mm-hmm. guy just, like, didn't bring as much comedy to the role as he could have. Like, mm-hmm. it was this character that took himself, like, really seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, and I th- I wonder if having an actor who was better at playing off um what the other actors were giving him and playing off the script a bit in terms of like the physicality of the role like if that wouldn't have made it more entertaining because i honestly didn't give a shit about that dude the whole way through no no not at all um so who who do you think you would have cast i don't know john like didn't have to be like someone super super funny like it didn't Mm. have to be like i don't know them casting owen wilson alongside jackie chan again yeah Um, yeah (laughs) Do you know yeah. it's your favorite person in the whole world would actually be pretty good at this, Michael oh, Sheen. God. He would have been perfect. He would have Michael actually Sheen. been perfect for this. He would have been so lovable. You would have cared about his dreams and his ambitions the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if he just spoke like he wouldn't even have to put on like an English accent, like his Welsh accent mm-hmm. would be perfect for that. It would be brilliant. His well yeah, flawless, flawless choice. Yeah, I think that's actually and then, a good shout. It's a slight comment on classism Ooh. in British society because it's all these like rich upper class scientists just hating on the Welsh dude. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, mm. okay, Netflix, come on, we'll turn it into a come series. On. Look at us, look at us. Amazing. Okay, so you said you're seeing that we could have saved it more yeah. sort of what, scenic. What, what views. about you? Like, what, well, what did you not like? Or what <sighs> I don't do you know. think could have been better? I feel like. Fang was defeated so easily. And kind of pointless. Like, yeah. such a weird little side plot where, like, there's kind of an attempt to stop them, and then they get away, and it's fine. Yeah. And then at the end, Fang is still like, no. Yeah, like, so, so like, it felt like they wrote the first bit where he, we were like, okay, we're gonna start with him getting the Jade Buddha mm. back. And then, like, they get it, the, the Jade Buddha back to, to China with very little difficulty. And they were like, shit, we've paid for this actress and we've done this yeah. whole fucking B plot and it's just dissolved because we wrote this badly. Right, okay, yeah. there's a Jade mine. There's a Jade mine under the yeah. village and that's why she's now back in. We're, we're, we're fine. And it just made very little sense. Make it like no, it a much no harder sense thing. At all. Yeah, like... And it's never made what? clear also why the Royal Science Society would care about a jade mine mm. in China. Mm-hmm. Or whether they would have any pull to actually be able to go and, like, mine there. Yeah. And I feel like... Like, the general, the warlord's like, oh, yeah, I'll totally let you mine <laughs> there. But it's like, there's probably a little bit more involved than just you. Yeah, and, and it's it's... I mean, I, obviously they didn't want it to be, like, too real, but, like, yeah. what the British did during, like, the opium 
the opioid thing to the Chinese people, like when we, it was still a colony of the UK, was far more effective than like hiring a Chinese warlord to do that. Like it yeah. wouldn't, yeah, it, it's just really ridiculous to try and get this like evil Chinese mysterious woman who's deadly into the thing, but is defeated super easy. Um, yeah, so so I think that would have been my scene. Make her more fierce or just get rid yeah. of her completely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did, you know, on that point, I loved the actor playing um the head of the Royal Academy of Sciences. The yes, bad, the baddie. um broad not broadband, um broadbent, Jim Broadbent. So good. He also plays Ziggler in Moulin Rouge for people who like Moulin like Rouge. Like Moulin Rouge. And he's just uh, like <laughs> this perfect level of theatricality to him mm -hmm. when he's like this is the royal academy of science we don't have to prove anything so funny <laughs> he's Lawless so line. good at that so um, good he was also in harry potter i'm pretty sure he was um oh yeah he i'm gonna just check because i yeah. I, I might be completely wrong harry potter and the deathly Hallows. yeah professor horace slughorn Mm. It's like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's delightful. He's just like this funny little, little old man. Dude, yeah. And he's just great. Yeah. And he's got such like he's very commanding. Yeah. yeah. The only way the queen could stop me is if she sat <laughs> on me with her fat, big, fat royal bottom. And then he turns around and there's <laughs> Kathy Bates. Oh when I saw her come back, because I completely forgot that she was in this, I immediately just like pictured her as the in from like Titanic. And her role in Titanic. <laughs> and I was like, this is great. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so would you watch it again? Probably not. It's wow. a very long it's a very long movie. Um and you know what's gonna happen kind of when you start watching it. Oh yeah. I don't know. It's fine. Like I think it's definitely a good movie to like throw on if you're like babysitting a bunch of kids or something, you know? Like just keep them entertained for two fucking hours. <laughs> um like by all means. But I like me by myself for myself, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fair enough. What I about mean... you? See, I was going to say similar, a similar thing, like babysitting, you got lots of kids around, this is the perfect movie, it's got like yeah. really basic like humour at points, and like it's still a lovely story, but I just love this movie, I mean I've watched it a whole bunch of times, and it's just, it's just really heartwarming. It's just nice. You know, yeah, it's just, it's just lovely, and I think if I was like ill, and there was nothing, like, and I was just like scrounging for like a really heartfelt chill movie that i could fall yeah. asleep to and nothing's gonna matter if i fall asleep to it this is the perfect movie for that so okay. yeah yeah interesting interesting yeah. so tell me all about the spy <sighs> next door bob ho yo this is ho <laughs> we don't talk about the rap scene in this we we talk about that exclusively because I love that, <laughs> especially in Jackie Chan's broken English. Like oh, fantastic God. when he goes, "Yo, this is ho." I was just like, "Fuck me, this is fantastic." Let's all just give Jackie Chan a break and remember that English is not his yes. first language. <laughs> yes, I hate it when people and he like, acts in it so yeah. often. <laughs> Like it's it it drench, like it really bugs me when people like make fun of people who can't like ha like speak really good English. Like yeah. fuck you! How many languages do you know, asshole? Like, ugh. Yeah. 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 I I actually I so I was reading a bunch of um really interesting facts about or like the trivia about the movie and the one guy I think Magnus Sheving. Okay. Um, who plays like the bad guy? He's right. actually I think Icelandic. Right. So then okay. he had to learn how to act in a Russian accent. <laughs> that is actually very impressive. In English, which is super impressive. But then he was saying, like, his English wasn't actually that great. And Jackie Chan also, like, English isn't his <laughs> first language. So, like, they didn't know how to talk to each other. And, like, in one fight scene, like, they were pretty much just, like, guessing what the other meant. So he got smacked full in the face by Jackie Chan because he thought he had to move forward instead of back. No, that is so funny. <laughs> oh my so god. Cute? That is so adorable. These two beautiful men. Oh my word. That is brilliant. 
what a yeah. shit show like who who <laughs> hired these people to be in the same film oh god oh, okay brilliant so okay. let's let me tell you what happens and then we'll talk about the movie okay okay Bob Ho, played by Jackie Chan, is an international spy. He works for the Chinese government, but is currently on loan to the CIA um, as like a spy exchange. Yeah, it's sort of like secondment, but for spying, I guess. Yeah. He's had a long, successful career alongside his partner, Colton James, played by Billy Ray Cyrus, and his boss, <laughs> um, Glaze, played by George Lopez. However, Bob has decided that it's time to retire. He wants to settle down with the woman who is his next door neighbor, Jillian, played by Amber Valletta. The only problem is that Jillian has three kids who hate Bob. The kids are Farron, played by Madeline Carroll, who's 13 and absolutely hates everything. Um, <laughs> young Ian, who's like a giant nerd and try just trying to be cool, played by Will Shadley. And Nora, who's just young and adorable and likes animals and wants to be a princess, played by Alina Foley. Now that he's retired, Bob's really trying to make an effort with Jillian, and his chance comes when she has to go away for a week, and she asks him to babysit. He is convinced that he's going to make the kids love him. Here's the problem. <laughs> On his computer is a file that he got sent uh, that is top secret intelligence. Unfortunately, Ian mistakes it for a concert file and, downslo and downloads it to his iPod. Remember those? Um, <laughs> Russian spies see that the file has been downloaded and need to retrieve it at any cost. So, uh, Anton Poldark, played by Magna Sheeving, Sheeving um, and Creel, played by Catherine Bo Bocher, uh, are on the hunt trying to get a hold of this file. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of shenanigans, mainly as Bob also starts using spy equipment to help him parent the kids because looking after kids <laughs> is really hard and exhausting. Um, he slowly starts to bond with them. Of course, then things start getting hard because they start getting attacked by spies. Bob has to hide them in a hotel. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> lots of the back and forth and through it all the kids start learning to love him and really grow fond of bob um the final showdown takes place at the house where the kids actually help bob fight even jillian throws a couple punches even <laughs> though she's super mad at bob for lying about the whole spy thing um it also turns out that glaze was a huge traitor all along and he was help gonna help the russian spies uh in exchange for a bunch of money and he gets stopped because um frankly a little late colton shows up with like a swat team um anyway bob ho and the kids save the day uh jillian's about to send bob away until she realizes that her kids actually really love him and she's re willing to give him a chance the end oh how lovely what is your scene that could have saved this you mean my clip hanger sorry uh i do that every <laughs> time what is your clip hanger for this uh, so my cliffhanger is going to be this one. And it's at the very beginning when Bob's talking about retiring. And, you know, his friend who turns out to be the traitor is like, oh, why wouldn't you want to be a spy? It's the dream. Oh, you yeah. You sit around waiting and eating junk food and getting beaten up. Yeah. <laughs> and I just kind of loved that. I was like, wow, that's really self-aware. Yeah. It's, it's a great movie for that because it's just got like so many little bits that are and i think maybe this is just a jackie chan thing because overall mm. the film isn't great but there are just little bits no. that you're just like i love this and i love this so very much i yeah. mean when you told me that we were gonna do spy next door when you texted me to that like i hosed myself because it's one that i just didn't want to watch ever no and and of course and you chose you that one and i'm so glad that we did watch it bob yeah. ho is a dream okay you and I like both come from families whose parents have stayed together. So we don't mm -hmm. know. We, I guess we don't know personally the struggle of like accepting Being a from step a broken dad. home. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm sorry if my stepdad or potential stepdad is, is Bob Ho, Jackie Chan. Oh um, dad, come here. Hi. Hello. Love you so much. When he's singing in Cantonese to the little girl. So, I think it's Cantonese. Mm -hmm. I th it, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But it's so cute. And he's just like patting her. And it's, oh. oh. I didn't know he could sing. Like, I guess like the Ferrojaka. Yeah. I think he's yeah. released an album or two. 
Jackie Chan. I think, yeah. Stop it. This, that dude is good. illustrious. I know. I love him. Um, oh my God. And this, I'm kind of glad we watched this movie because it mm-hmm. got me thinking. I was comparing it, you know, because there are a lot of movies like this where like the action yeah. star uh, has to look after kids and then he bonds with the kids, right? Yeah. Like Vin Diesel's got one. I think The, the Rock's, Rock's got, got one. one. Um, recently, Dave Batista has one. And um, um, uh, our, our boy, um, Mark Wahlberg, he's got one. Mark Wahlberg's got one. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking, you know, what sort of differentiates jackie chan and what shows like really well in this movie is like Mm. at no point to him are the kids a burden Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. he's not like oh i have to look after these stupid kids and uh you know do things that don't fit my gender roles like he's immediately like no i just need to get these kids on my side like i really want to help look after these kids yeah and i really want to do this nice thing for a woman that i love like Mm. um it's never like, oh, I can't believe I have to change diapers. Oh, I can't believe yeah. I have to go shopping for princess dresses. Like, it's just, I think, this really positive form of masculinity mm-hmm. where, like, he's clearly a tough guy. Like, he's a spy. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing fighter. Um, he's got all these gadgets. He's really confident in himself and his masculinity yeah. and who he is. And he's like, why would I bitch about like having to cook breakfast or like yeah. uh, talk to a 13 year old about her very difficult parent situation yeah. and her yeah. feelings of abandonment. Like, it's just like, that's never a question for him. He's like, of course I'll do these things. Yeah. Because that's what you do when you want people to care about you and when you want to look after people. Um, and I just found that actually really refreshing yeah oh my god you've like i didn't even realize it until you said it but holy shit like i I feel like we should end the podcast there because that's like (laughs) such an uplifting note and it's something that we can all all take awareness of in the fact like it's such a common genre like you said it there with so many of these like you know it's the tough guy has to do something that's fragile and you know you don't think of jackie chan as the tough guy and and uh, even though he's fucking formidable yeah. Um, just because he's not like hench as fuck, but yeah. yeah, and and you know he's just he's just a lovable guy, and yeah. you know, and, and it is a positive role model for for future dads, whether you know of your own kids or or, or step kids, yeah. and just you know, this is the person you love, and you would do anything for them. Yeah, show a little like I think it's someone who shows so much more humility and grace. Um, It's just, it's really cool. And I mean, you know, he rose to prominence in what, like the 80s, 90s? And like to have this amazing example of like, or a different like look at what masculinity can look Mm -hmm. like, um, I think is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Just responsible parenting. And it's, yeah, it's Just like being a good dude who's not like quick to anger or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, just like a guy who's there and he'll fight if he has to but it's not like his first go-to mm-hmm. exactly yeah. and like i love jackie chan as a person not just within this movie yeah but like yeah. my favorite parts of jackie chan movies are definitely the outtakes at like the end of his films like yeah. the ones the ones for this one were really funny so like fun where the where the, like the the female protagonist like screws up her lines and jackie's just like i love it when they screw up on english it makes me feel so much better about my english <laughs> and i was like yes you sweet baby angel never stop being you It's so great when I was reading the trivia for this movie. The trivia Uh for this movie is so wholesome (laughs) because like everybody was like, oh, I just joined because I really want to work with Jackie Chan. And everyone's like, yeah, Jackie Chan's amazing to work with. Like he's such a professional. And Jackie Chan's like, yeah, I wanted to do this movie because I love making kids laugh and it makes me really (laughs) happy if I can entertain children. Like it's all just so good for your heart. Oh man. Okay, so we're canceling this podcast and now we're just going to do like jackie chan films you're you're happy <laughs> with that chan appreciation <laughs> yeah we're, we're jackie fans um yeah. and that's the name of the podcast the jackie fan podcast and <laughs> that's that's it we don't need to do anything else Why did you ever we? did you ever watch the jackie chan animated show with like the talismans and his yes i did fucking show that was, it was unbelievable that shit was heartwarming too like it had a lot yeah. of like interesting character development and like 
uh, it was a little a young female um, protagonist or like it yeah. was like a little girl he was training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was his like um, yeah. niece. It was his niece, niece and then he's yeah. got his uncle and they're like, you know, trying to get the talismans and it's fighting, but he's got like it was the little so oh, cute. It was so good. Oh, everything yeah. Jackie Chan touches is just is just wonderful. Yeah. Oh, man. And on top of the fact, like, you know, everybody was saying, like, as a stunt person, like, mm. he's just fantastic to work with. Like, mm-hmm. he's so game to try different things and, mm-hmm. like, collaborate. Um, and that dude works fucking hard. Like, I know yeah. he's broken, what, like, most of the bones <laughs> in his body at yeah, one without point question. or another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dude, that dude has been through a lot. But, you know, <sighs> yeah, snaps. Um, but going back to more of this movie than, yes. than Jackie yeah. Chan's Let's incredible career. Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What a dream. What was he doing there? <laughs> Why was he a spy? In what world is Billy Ray Cyrus a spy? <laughs> He's like the most conspicuous man. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he spying? <laughs> What is he doing? What is he doing there? And I loved his little southern little tidbits. Like he was just like, "Oh, we'll get this to you faster than a hedgehog on a spiky road or something." Like, like it was just great. <laughs> Who, uh, and like they're best friends as well, which I can kind of see. Like, if I if, would watch the buddy cop movie of the two of them, I'm not gonna lie. That would be so Wouldn't good. You? Oh, so much so. So you got like a scene where like oh, that would be perfect. So like. They're in the Wild West. They're traveling down. Jackie Chan's just like fucking shit up. And then at night, um, Billy Richard Ray Cyrus is just there. And he goes, I don't know if you guys have heard this one. I call it Wonderwall. And he just starts playing <laughs> Wonderwall on his just, like acoustic guitar. Just like every night. And 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 regardless, just Jackie Chan is just like sitting there fascinated. So happy. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Netflix, we're here for it any day now any yeah. Yeah. day so uh a scene that could have saved it from you oh, i mean look <laughs> we, we're saying all this really nice stuff but it's not that great a movie <laughs> no. i'm gonna say it no. it's um like you know exactly what's gonna happen the moment you start watching it mm-hmm. um the russian motivations aren't super well established the yeah. villains are not great no. Um, they're mo- mainly kind of vicious stereotypes, but yeah. Um, so I guess I would have liked maybe more formidable villains, or like, don't even bother with it at all. Like, mm-hmm. just have his corrupt boss coming back to try and like steal the thing with mm-hmm. his henchmen. Like, I don't know why Russians had to be involved. <laughs> um, yeah. That being said. You know, again, I think this is a great movie to just like turn on for the kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fight scenes are really, really fun, and you can tell that a lot of like work and heart went into them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, it's uh, just like get rid of the whole Russian B plot. Like, yeah, it is really kind of don't really care. Yeah, if it was just more focused on like Jackie trying to like win over the kids, it could have been really fun and like. You know, this, like, really in-depth journey. I guess it would have been a waste because then you wouldn't have had Jackie Chan doing, like, crazy karate. Yeah. But, you know, it would have just been a cool, you know, coming-of-age movie, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, like I said, there could have been, like, the bad guy, his ex-boss, trying to get the Mm. file from him for some reason and hiring Mm -hmm. henchmen kind of thing. Excuse me. Um, I just don't think that the Russians needed to be involved in it. Yeah. For it it to work. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, yeah, it it's even if just like yeah, like you said, the guy was corrupt, it would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, from my side, I gotta agree, the Russian plot was weird. Um but yeah, like I, f- I thought that the kids were won over a bit too easily for my liking. I would have mm-hmm. I would have like le- loved a little bit more pushback. Um, you know, I think the third the, the the whole change the whole arc of the oldest child with her like yeah whole thing with her parents was like really good that was some hard yeah. stuff yeah but uh, yeah the other bits i was just like eh, okay i mean yeah yeah 
Yeah, apparently that was Jackie Chan's favorite scene to film, their little heart-to-heart on the roof, because he was like, yeah, these are real issues that families have, and it was cool to, like, show that on screen, and I was like, Jackie, be less of an angel. Like, I can't stand it. It's, he's too good for this planet. He's too good for We don't deserve Jackie Chan. No, not even a little bit. And it's Mm -hmm. such a great scene. Oh, that scene where the youngest is like, I love you, Bob. And it's just like, oh, stop it. And they've got a little kitten. Oh, when he rescues the kitten from the roof. (laughs) My ovaries. I was like, Jillian, if you don't marry him. (laughs) I'm coming for him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jackie. Uh, so would you watch it again? No. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. I mean, I love Jackie Chan, but there are many other ways I can get my Jackie Chan fix. <laughs> it's not this movie. Do you know what would be good, actually? The only mm. time that I would guess I would watch this again is you and I start a mm. seminar or a course uh. for bros who are, well, not, not necessarily bros, but fuckboys. Yeah. Uh, oh, so cool. So like a, a, a D fuckboy uh seminar and we just show them this movie because like it will have that interest because they'll be like oh you're bro you got jackie chan fucking shit up and we'll be like yes yes we do but also look how he treats women and families (laughs) and they'll be like what they'll be like i don't know we'll just play jackie chan movies (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) and they're like i don't know women terry cruz yes yes terry cruz as well yeah that's a good shout yeah, because he, mm. he's he's such a good family man. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone through. I, I like Terry Crews also because he had like a whole journey with mm. like his addiction to porn and stuff and um like his rough childhood and everything. Mm-hmm. So like he's come out the other side with some really good revelations around that. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. If there, if we have any fuck boys listening to the podcast, Simone and I will be starting our seminar pretty soon. Uh, if you want to send us a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, we will send you two thousand dollars back, um, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll link. Did you not hear about that whole twi- Twitter thing? Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yes, I was doing a, a topical reference, which I guess <laughs> won't be super topical given that this will come out a week after it's happened. Yeah. But uh, at the time of recording, that was a topical joke, you guys. That was, it was so funny, you guys. I'm a I'm a young comedian. Um, <laughs> so, so Simone, thank you so much for this week. I mean, ah, uh, Jackie Chan week. What a fucking dream. I can't believe we haven't done it sooner, to be honest. Right? This is like the most wholesome podcast, and he is the most wholesome human yeah, being. He should be like our little, he should be our new um, podcast like cover art. Yeah. <laughs> should we Jackie see Chan. if we can, if, should, should we see if we can get his likeness? If, if, if he's cool <laughs> with us getting his likeness and him just like... <laughs> <laughs> people are gonna think he's one of the hosts which wouldn't (laughs) that be amazing oh my god could you imagine getting jackie chan on this (gasps) oh my god oh i need to see if he's got like twitter or instagram and we're gonna try and get him on this podcast guys if you know jackie chan or have any kind of connections with jackie chan let him know about us Mm -hmm. and how much we love him and yeah yeah so simone what is your optimistic thing for this week My optimistic thing for this week. So I got out of the house a bit uh, yesterday, Chad. And um, so it's so cold here that there's snow on the mountains, which I know doesn't mean anything to like 70% of our listener base. But but in South Africa, it's really exciting. Um, So we uh, drove to the mountains yesterday to like look at the snow. Um, and it was just like so beautiful to spend like a whole day out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just, it was nice. It felt like being normal yeah. for a little bit again. Um, yeah, it was just, it was lovely to be part of the world. That's so great. I'm so glad. <laughs> and I'm it was sorry. like I'm beautiful. Sorry. It was out by like series. I don't know if you've driven yeah, yeah, that yeah. way before. Yeah. yeah. So That's just so nice. That's stunning. beautiful. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. I'm glad like it could send to you again. Yeah, and how about you? Um, so it's been a week, and um, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for 
what am I going to go for? I, I, I'll go for my marks. Yeah, I passed mm. the latest course that I've done, the graduate diploma hey. in law. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I can now move on fully. I know I got into master's already, but that was a conditional acceptance upon these marks, which mm -hmm. I got back. So yeah, well chuffed about it. I got Yay. a distinction in land law. So I guess I'm going to be a land lawyer now. Um, I guess it's predictated by that fact. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, I'm very chuffed about that. Very chuffed that I can move on and, and uh, you know, get further in in, in the academia world. Woo! Woo -woo! Snaps for Chad. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, so, what do we want to do next week? Any ideas? I was thinking, what mm. if we do disaster movies? Obviously, no pandemic it, ones. Yes. Yes. No pen. Like, obviously. Yes. But like, disaster movies. Um, okay. I was thinking. Let me just pull up Rotten Tomatoes here. Uh, uh, we could do 2012. Oh, I love that movie. I can't believe it did badly. That's that I angers got 40%. me. 40%. I can believe it did badly. <laughs> oh, I will fight you. Okay, Ooh. fine. <laughs> yes, 2012, the greatest movie of all time. Onwards. Oh, wait, no, th sorry, sorry. I'm thinking Day After Tomorrow. No, 2012 is shit. Day After sorry. Tomorrow also got under 50%. So we can do both of those. I'm so angry about that, but yeah, I'm happy. Which one would you rather do? I mean, you love Day After Tomorrow so much. Why don't you do that? I'll do 2012. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was hoping you were going to say that, but, you know, like, it, it was more for the... <laughs> For the, what how uh, polite you are <laughs> of course <laughs> you're just like oh yeah i love day after tomorrow i can't believe it did badly so what movie do you want to do <laughs> you know i don't want to i don't want to i i i, I hate conversa confrontation so very much that's what i'm gonna say about that <laughs> chad <laughs> it's my it's proper english the englishman in me i was like hmm. yeah yeah okay i'm just, very happy uh, what what I wish that I just said, oh, I'll do day after tomorrow just to watch your face. Be like, <laughs> okay, cool, great, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Fine. You, you if you think you can do it justice, then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm I'm excited for next week. What a week it's okay. gonna be. That's gonna be great. Okay, yeah. sick. Jake Gyllenhaal making a return to the podcast. My favorite human being excellent mm -hmm. fantastic well thank you guys so much for listening we really do appreciate it and uh while you're on the internet you know surfing through the the variety of websites that you surf through mm -hmm. or you know just the same three that you always do why not go and leave us a rating on you know apple podcasts or wherever else you yeah. can leave ratings leave us a comment as well because that really helps people sort of find out about us and like what's interesting yeah. about the podcast and everything and we'd really appreciate it and uh you know if you have any questions for us want to discuss anything please feel free to do so. We love speaking to you guys. It's always super, yeah. super fun to, to hear what you guys yeah. think of the podcast. So Genuinely. where can they, yeah, where can they do that, Simone? Uh, they can talk to us on uh, Twitter or, no, yep, on Twitter at Fresh Tomatoes MP, on Facebook and Instagram at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast. And they can email us at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast at gmail.com. I started in the wrong place and I just got myself all mixed up. It's so funny how like, things you know that have become so auto automatic as soon as you yeah. do something a bit weird you're just like nope don't remember any of this this is all nonsense was not ready yeah yeah it always does scare me when you mess that up because i'm like i can't i can't back you up on this i can't correct you i don't, <laughs> I don't know. know these things <laughs> like if you if you if you go down the ship's going down <laughs> oh no um and on that note guys as we say at the end of every week we love you and there's nothing you can do about it we love you and there's nothing you can do about it Goodbye. Goodbye.